Hey, it's me, Nalthazar, and welcome to another Magic the Gathering Puzzle Quest video. In today's video, I'm going to be going over a brand new mythic from Zendikar Rising, Phylath World Sculptor. So, let's get into it. Phylath World Sculptor is one of the cards from my Mythic and Masterpiece Chase video. Phylath is a 24 mana creature. It's an 8-8. It is legendary. It is an elemental. And when this creature enters the battlefield, create X forest tokens. X is the number of green gems on the battlefield at the time that Phylath enters the battlefield. Then it has Landfall Green. Target elemental creature you control gets plus X plus X. This effect can trigger up to two times per turn, where X is the number of green gems on the battlefield at the time of the landfall. Now, that does not include the gems that are in the landfall itself. Those immediately get kazapped, and then once those get kazapped, then you've got the, the landfall proper, right? And so then it's going to go ahead and uh, trigger based on what else is remaining on the battlefield. Now, Phylath is able to make an incredible amount of forest tokens. We have so much green gem conversion, and because of that, Phylath is going to be able to enter the battlefield and create so many tokens. It's wacky. Uh, and then the landfall green, if you build a deck around Phylath, you can fairly reasonably expect this to be going off two times a turn. And since it's going to make it so that target elemental creature gets that boost, either you can give it to Phylath, you can give it to the little forests, because those forests are indeed elementals. Or if you run another creature in your deck that is an elemental, you can give the buff to that creature also. Now, because this makes forest tokens, and those forest tokens are elementals, this particular creature pairs very well with Nissa World Waker. She is one of my favorite Planeswalkers of all time, and her abilities lend entirely perfectly to Phylath because Nissa World Waker's first ability is going to go ahead and convert gems to green, and it's going to create forest tokens, which means that we can use her first ability to play more of the tokens that Phylath is going to, and then we're going to convert gems to green, which is going to make it so that subsequent Phylaths are maybe going to come in with more forest tokens, and those gem conversions are going to cause potential green landfalls, which means that Phylath is going to make super big buffs to your elemental creatures. And if that wasn't enough, we've also got Heart of Zendikar to create the four Ashaya the Awoken World tokens, which are leader elemental tokens that have haste and trample. So with the Phylaths coming down, creating all of those tokens, instead of having them all come out as one ones, if you play Ashaya, then you're going to have them all come into play as two twos. And it will not take very long for them to get regenerate or hexproof, because you just need the Ashaya to be reinforced 12 times, which realistically is only going to take you one Phylath. So Nissa is kind of, in my opinion, the perfect pairing, sorry, Nissa is the perfect pairing for Phylath. Now, if you guys haven't checked it out yet, uh, Gauzmaster is another guy who makes YouTube content for Magic the Gathering Puzzle Quest. I actually have his channel uh, linked to mine. I'll put a descript I'll put a link to the video in the uh, the description of this one. Uh, but Gauz also made a video on Phylath, and Gauz used Brocon because Brocon is going to let you fetch three Phylaths and have them enter the battlefield immediately, uh, which is a very different way of using Phylath, and uh, I think it's actually really cool. Um, but in spite that, my personal favorite way is still going to be to use Nissa World Waker. Once again, I'm an absolute fiend for this particular Planeswalker, and Phylath just perfectly fits in with Nissa. Now, there's one thing about this card that I kind of overlooked when I was first reading it, and it makes it so much better than I thought it was, and I already thought it was good. And that is that the elemental creature gets that plus X plus X boost, but that plus X plus X boost is permanent. So that means that twice a turn, you get to permanently boost one of your creatures based on the number of green gems on the battlefield. I cannot stress enough with the amount of green gem conversion how insanely powerful this gets. On the regular, I am easily able to get those forest tokens to over 100 power. I'm getting them up to 150 power even when I'm not getting a Shia down, right? So even when I'm not making the leader for elementals, they're still getting insanely powerful. Now you got a sneak peek at the rest of the deck uh, just a second ago. The way that I'm running it is as follows. I'm running my Yasharn core. Um, Yasharn core is kind of sort of 
the best thing in standard. But Yasharn also happens to be an elemental, which means that Phylath is able to buff up Yasharn with the boosts from the green gem converters. Now, because we want all the green gem converters, having stuff like Turn Timber, which by the way is going to get us free Phylaths, uh, and also give us a green gem converter in the form of that turn timber serpentine wood. We've got Reclaim the Wastes, which is going to fetch us the turn timber and is also going to convert gems to green. And we've got Realms Uncharted, which is going to help fetch us turn timber and, yep, convert gems to green. Now, if that wasn't enough green gem conversion, because there's never enough green gem conversion, I'm also running Skyclave Relic in here because Skyclave Relic is absolutely ridiculous. This card is going to have to get a video of its own at some point. I use it so much. It's absolutely phenomenal. Uh, the number of gems that you can convert with this thing is just otherworldly crazy. And then I'm running Inscription of Abundance to serve as removal and life gain. When you're getting your forest tokens to over 100 power and then you play Inscription of Abundance to gain over 100 life and have your critter fight whatever you want, uh, basically your opponent's first critter, I should say uh, that you, 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 if you don't giggle at that, then you just don't find fun in doing silly things, maybe? I don't know. I don't know. I, I giggle all the time when I'm using this just because I'm like, oh, <laughs> I'm getting 150 life for using Inscription of Abundance, and then I'm also going to kill my opponent's first creature. I mean, the killing the opponent's first creature when you're gaining 150 life because you have a 150 power creature on the battlefield is kind of redundant, but it does mean that you can just play this deck in the training grounds or in an event over and over and over and over again because you're gaining so much life that just silly things happen. I wound up throwing in Throne of McKindy. Throne of McKindy is an exclusive that's currently in the vault at the time of my recording this video. It's uh, $5 right now. Uh, and I threw this in here because there's actually a lot of cards that have kicker. So Throne of McKindy is going to convert gems to loyalty gems and then reinforce itself every turn. Uh, but then it's also going to have that bottom ability that when you drain mana from your hand for a kicker effect, convert X gems to your Planeswalker colors. Uh, where X is 3 plus the number of this support's reinforcements. So if you take a look at the deck really fast, we've got Reclaim the Wastes, we've got Realms Uncharted, we've got Skyclave Relic, and we've got Inscription of Abundance. That's four cards with Kicker, and so this Throne of McKindy's uh, Kicker effect is actually going to go off quite a lot. Uh, and so I find that the landfalls that this creates are definitely worth my using Throne of McKindy, but if you don't have this, that's fine. You don't need this card for this particular deck. You can use something like Nissa's Pilgrimage or Gingerbread Cabin, and you'll do just fine. I just wanted to try out Throne of McKindy, and it turned out to be a fantastic addition to the deck. Castle Garenbrig is my other land. It's going to convert gems to green, and then creates an activated gem to convert up to six more gems to green, which is supremely awesome. And then I threw Nissa's Revelation into the deck so that I could get a little bit more card draw and a little bit more life gain, because, let's face it, gaining 150 life at a time from Inscription of Abundance is not enough for me. So, Nissa's Revelation is here. No, really, it is enough for me. I actually just have Nissa's Revelation here to draw cards. You could make a perfectly good excuse for Escape from the Wilds so that you can get down Free Throne of McKindy's and Castle Garenbriggs, uh, but I like Nissa's Revelation myself. It costs a little bit less mana, uh, which is nice. So, I want to go ahead and show off some of the gameplay with this deck. Um, I actually have two separate gameplay footage or clips for you guys. The first one... Uh, is me going up against a standard deck, and the second one is me going up against an Olivia Legacy deck. So I wanted to show you that this, even though this is a standard deck, I wanted to show you guys that this is strong not only in standard, but it's actually even strong in Legacy too. Like, Phylath is a supremely powerful card. This isn't just like a flavor of the day sort of video. Phylath is really, really strong if you can build around it. So let's go ahead and watch the footage. So, in this first match, I'm up against Bolas. I'm going to be prioritizing the Realms Uncharted in my hand. Uh, I'm not actually going to cast it here because I don't have enough to kick it. I definitely want to make sure that I kick it when I cast it. Uh, but I was prioritizing the Realms Uncharted over the Turn Timber because I was hoping that with the Realms Uncharted, I would be able to convert gems to green, which would potentially enable me to play the Turn Timber and also get another Turn Timber in my hand by fetching it with the the Realms Uncharted. So I do indeed get a Turn Timber. Uh, I'm actually going to go ahead and take myself a Castle Garen Brig too, and then I wind up getting more mana than I spent kicking it back. Uh, and there's also way more gems here that are green. So uh, I draw another Realms Uncharted. I've definitely got seven mana in my Turn Timber, uh, six mana, excuse me. So that will enable me to absolutely, definitely 
uh, kick the Realms Uncharted, and then I'll be able to get more cards, and I'll also be able uh, to likely play my Turn Timber after this. So I'm just going to fetch the Turn Timber here. That's the only one I want. I'm going to pay the Kicker, and I get incredibly unlucky. Like, there were only two other gems on the board or so, or three, like that, that would not have created a green match, but whatever. Now, I did say that both of my ma that one of my matches was was a standard match. I'm wrong. This is a legacy match. Actually, both of my matches are are legacy matches in this video. So I was playing this in uh, the Awakened Inferno event. I'm going to be pulling Yasharn first, and uh, that might seem like a little bit of an odd move, but I'm pulling Yasharn because I have my first ability available. I have a whole bunch of turn timbers in my hand now. And so by having all these turn timbers in my hand now, that means that I'm going to be able to definitely pick up Phylath as many times as I want after this turn. So uh, I'm going to go ahead, swing into Bolas twice. I'm going to let Bolas do whatever Bolas wants to do here. I'm really genuinely not even remotely afraid. Uh, I've got enough mana here in my hand now to get uh, two turn timbers. I do want to prioritize the Skyclave Relic. I've got that Throne of McKindy on the battlefield. Um, that is building up reinforcements, which means that when I kick my Skyclave, it's going to go ahead and convert more gems to green for me. I do want to make a horizontal match if I can. I would like to be able to get the land down for Turn Timber, and this is where I'm going to start bringing Phylaths down. So I've got all three of my creatures here. I've got my Forest Tokens, I've got my Yasharn, and I've got Phylath. And so uh, Phylath is going to come in. Phylath is going to go ahead and make a ton of tokens. Look at this. We're going to take another Phylath here, and we're getting two of them, so that's what? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Yeah, okay, twelve tokens. That's that's pretty solid. Uh, going to kick the Skyclave, and as you see, it's going to go ahead, convert the gems, and I immediately get to start buffing my creatures. So I'm going to actually go ahead and choose to buff my Yasharn here instead of buffing my forest tokens. In the event that you're wondering why I'm buffing Yasharn instead of my forest tokens, it's just because I'm up against Bolas. And because I'm up against Bolas and this is legacy, Bolas could very well have some kind of damage attack, like a uh, damage attack, damage spell, like Hour of Devastation or something that would then kill my Yasharn. And I didn't, I didn't want to lose the creature. So just knowing that I'm up against a red legacy deck, I chose to buff up uh, my Yasharn here. So uh, I'm going to go ahead buff Yasharn. I got two green landfalls, so I just at the beginning of my turn get to buff this thing up twice, uh, and then I, I just get to absolutely melty face Bolas. I'm going to go ahead and definitely use the Inscription of Abundance here though, um, because, you know, why not? I'm going to use my third ability, which means that, <laughs> oh man, Ashaya's coming down. I've already got it up to 98 power. Uh, as I mentioned at the beginning of the video, I giggle when I get to use Inscription for over 100, so I'm definitely going to be using my Inscription of Abundance here on my Ashaya token uh, so that it, it gains me 101 life. Uh, so, all right, we're going to go ahead, power up the Ashaya there, that token that boosts it to 101. Look at that, I get 101 life. I get to kill my opponent's first creature. I get to convert more gems, and I get to kill Bolas. Big win all around. Much love, much splat. Goodbye, Oracle. I bet you didn't see that coming. <laughs> Alrighty, so for this match, I actually purposefully decided to use a match where my opponent got off to a really, really strong start, uh, just to show you guys how Phylath decks can respond to adversity. So uh, I'm not going to say everything that Koth does at the beginning, but this Koth deck has uh, a very solid match. This is a Legacy Koth deck. And so as you can imagine, Legacy Koth can do some pretty bad things. Getting the Dragon's Horde along with Anger turn 1 is a little bit scary. It means that my opponent's going to be getting Gem Conversion. My opponent's going to have Card Draw. My opponent's Critters are going to start getting Haste. So bad things can happen, but I'm going to Realms Uncharted. I don't even get Turn Timber here the first time, um, so I don't, I don't actually have a second Turn Timber in my hand. I'm going to have to stick with the one that I've got. However, I do have a Throne of McKindy and a Castle Garenbrig, and so with the Turn Timber that I'm going to be playing right here, uh, that means that I will definitely be able to get uh, a bunch of green gem conversion down. So I'm going to go ahead and play the Asharn first. Uh, you saw me do that last match, and I'm doing that this match too. It's just there, there isn't enough of a board state for me to want to have Phylath down just yet. Phylath is just such an explosive card that it's okay if, if it's not the first thing that you play. And so... 
Here, Koth gets down... Oh, man. Koth gets down Olivia, which is a terrifying creature. And so at this stage, I'm definitely behind in the match, right? Uh, just by a little bit. Now, I do have a full hand, which is nice, whereas Koth's hand is empty. But Koth does have his first ability. Koth does have Dragon's Horde. And as such, Koth is going to be able to draw cards from Dragon's Horde and then give them a whole bunch of mana with his abilities. So uh, I'm going to go ahead and use my first. That gives me some green gem conversion, which is great. And it's also going to ensure that uh, there's going to be some more green gems out on the battlefield right now, right? It's going to ensure that Castle Garenbrig and the Throne of McKindy come down. And so at this stage, I'm going to go ahead, play Castle Garenbrig. I'm going to play Throne of McKindy. And I'm just going to, I'm just going to bank on being able to take another hit here from Koth. I've got 90 health, which is, which is fantastic. And there's, there's Koth drawing cards, uh, like I mentioned. So uh, then Koth is actually going to wipe my board here. So uh, Koth drew double bedevil. And so like, you know, with, with a lot of mono green now, you look at this situation, you're like, w w you're sort of doomed, right, Nalthazar? Um, but I'm definitely not doomed here, right? So I've got that, I've got that turn timber still in my hand, uh, which is obviously going to be a, a huge play for me here. I can go ahead and take another Yasharn to rebuild my battlefield, uh, which is going to get me another turn timber. I've got a bunch of gem conversion on the battlefield right now, so I'm still actually feeling pretty good about the situation that I'm in, in spite Koth having uh, just these crazy matches going. Like, look at this. I mean, it's Koth is just such a nasty planeswalker. Um, and so now I'm, I'm down to 56 health, um, so I'm definitely taking a little bit of a beating here. It's definitely taking me a little bit longer to get things going. Uh, Koth wiping my board meant that instead of getting that early game uh, uh, Phylath like I was planning to I had to slow it down a little bit but that's okay this deck this deck can definitely handle it and it can handle it pretty easily so uh, I can go ahead I can kick the inscription of abundance here and I'm going to do that because my throne of McKindy has been actually storing a bunch of reinforcements which is going to convert a bunch of gems to green for me uh, which means that I should be able to start making some pretty sweet things happen so I've got the skyclave relic in my hand I'm going to freeze it down here so that I can start to charge mana into other cards in my hand. Just, I want to make sure that I can definitely kick the Skyclave Relic if I'm going to play the Skyclave Relic. Um, and so here I've got the choice of, well, do I want the Skyclave Relic kicked, or do I want to be able to play in a Turn Timber and get a Phylath here? Uh, and so the answer was that I wanted to be able to play the Turn Timber, and I wanted to be able to get a Phylath. So I'm going to bring my Phylath down. I'm already back to 88 health. Uh, and that's one of the really sweet things about this deck is that you've got so much life gain and you've got so much power to gain so much life that even if you're taking a lot of damage, you have so many ways of making that damage up that it doesn't wind up affecting you in the same way that it would affect a lot of other decks. Um, so low battery. Oh no. Uh, my computer's giving me a notification saying that it's about to run out. Uh, but that's okay. So uh, Karn is able to get the Dragon Queen down, which under normal situations would be a little bit scary. Uh, but for with what I just drew, this is looking like this could very well be game over for my opponent this turn, depending on what I draw. So uh, for the, the Nissa's Revelation. So I'm going to go ahead. I'm going to use my first ability that's going to get me some forest tokens. And then it's going to get me a green landfall, which means that I can start buffing my creatures up with Phylath. I'm going to go ahead and buff up Yasharn again. Yasharn is only at 9 power, and I definitely want to have a target in case I get another Inscription of Abundance. So I want to have a target with a bunch of power toughness. And so I'm going to play the Nissa's Revelation. I draw into a whole bunch of gem conversion. This is definitely game over this turn. Yeah, definitely, definitely game over this turn. So uh, I'm going to go ahead. I'm going to buff up Phylath this time just in case I don't somehow wind up winning this turn. But I do. Uh, and that means that Koth isn't going to be able to burn them. So I'm going to kick the Realms Uncharted, uh, get myself a Turn Timber Symbiosis. Uh, it's going to convert a whole bunch of gems, which means I'm going to be able to play everything in my hand. I've got another one of the beautiful, wonderful Realms Uncharted's. I'm not going to kick the Skyclave. I am, however, going to kick this Realms Uncharted to get even more green gem conversion going. Uh, I'm going to play another Phylath, which is going to get me Forest Tokens. And here you're just seeing the general snowball effect of how this deck is able to pull out so much power so quickly, gain so much life, that you're really able to overcome very strongly adverse situations. I mean, 
having having the the Koth deck with the removal and with the Olivia and the life gain from the life link from Olivia, um, it just it made this this match pretty difficult. Um, but even though it was you know a, a difficult match in the end, it wound up being a really easy ending. So uh, we're gonna go ahead and give Koth that happy ending that he wants right here. Um, so Nissa is gonna go bang, and then Koth is gonna go bye bye splat. Right. So goodbye Koth. That's the end of you. Thanks for playing. Thanks so much for watching. If you have Phylath, go ahead and try it out. It's really good. I'll see you in the next one.